Deputy Bridge Smith, who intended sharing. Minister, in theory, I should wholeheartedly welcome this bill and support it because it claims to be about improving the lot of vulnerable, low-paid workers who are exploited, grossly exploited by unscrupulous employers, workers who are not informed of their terms and conditions, workers whose hours aren't even notified to them in advance, who live on low-hour contracts and zero-hour contracts. I honestly don't know how they do it. I don't know how they manage uh, to exist, and there are tens of thousands of them out there. But it's interesting that having spent years denying that there was a problem, the government have now decided that they want to uh, look at this increased um, casualisation and exploitation of workers, and to that extent I guess it's welcome. But it, it is happening, and it is happening in a huge amount of ways across various employments. There's a fundamental imbalance of power between employers and workers, and that seems like it's stating the obvious, but I don't think you accept that, because I think what you're trying to do is to address uh, both sides in an equal way when there's a gross inequality that fundamentally and naturally exists between them. It's impossible for workers, for example, who are not organised in unions to even begin to stick their head above the parapet and demand the sort of protection that already exists for them uh, in, in some areas of legislation. Even to get minor improvements in their lives, it is so difficult for them in that vast sea of exploitation that exists out there. Um, I think a lot of the employers whom you've been talking to will be very happy with this bill, that they'll be happy to settle with it because they don't see a big alteration in their um, ways and means of doing business. There are two sections of the bill, at least, that I think are a response to other bills. I think the one on um, banded hours is a response to Deputy Cullinan's bill. I think his is much better, provides much more security, much more robust bill. And I think the other one on response to bogus self-employment contracts is a response to uh, Deputy McBarry's bill in Solidarity People Before Profit. And responding to those bills and making them less robust and worse is not a good practice. In fact, I think that the government, if they are serious about reducing the exploitation of these very vulnerable workers, should actually look again at those other bills and take the best elements out of them. Um, you say you listen to both employers and employees on this. Uh, but I want to make an argument here, and that is that since the recession and the so-called recovery, there's one thing we do know. Profits are back up to pre-recession levels. There's loads of money being made again. We also know that rents and living standards, the cost of living, have gone beyond pre-crash levels, but wages are still struggling for most workers. They are not holding up to the same degree that profits and uh, the cost of living is. And that is compounded by an explosion in the level of precarious work that is having a profound impact on the lives of ten th tens of thousands of workers. So I think the mantra that you never waste a good crisis was what the employers stuck to throughout, this, uh, throughout that current crisis and are still sticking to it. And that is why there are so many young workers in this country who are disillusioned with it, who have to leave the, the country, but even who live here cannot expect, for the first generation since the foundation of the state, they cannot expect to do better than their parents did. And that's a real tragedy that we're uh, overseeing that sort of a society. A recent ICTU report showed us that over 158,000 workers um, have their working hours varied from week to week, often without notice. There's been an increase by 34% in the numbers of part-time so-called self-employed workers uh, from 2008 to 2016. In eight years, more than a third of an increase in, in, in that precarious and so-called uh, self-employed. But there's huge question marks to be asked about the reality of bogus self-employment. And behind all these statistics are real lives, real hard, difficult lives of young workers who have uh, no ability to get a loan, to pay a mortgage, do not know from week to week if they're going to be able to pay their bills, if they're going to be able to pay the rent, can't make plans for holidays. Their lives and the quality of their lives are really, really suffering. And if they try to vindicate the rights that exist for them, they are that they're supposed to have in law, they find it very, very difficult unless they have the protection of a trade union. Um, and I wish to point out to you, Minister, that while you claim that a lot of the good stuff in the bill flows from the University of Limerick study, 
that study actually has a hell of a lot more to offer than what the bill contains. Uh, so you suggest, for example, that where the cancellation of work hours are not notified to an employee, they should get three hours of the national minimum wage or the rate of an employment uh, registration order that applies. What about uh, the three hours pay of a worker who normally earns much, much more above the national minimum wage or the ERO, and there are many of them out there in working in care, in hospitality, etc. Uh, it prohibits zero-hour contracts, but not in all circumstances, only in most circumstances. And there are substantial better recommendations in the University of Limerick report that are not uh, included here. And I would say that it's clearly because the employer organisations didn't want them included in here. I doubt if you got much resistance to those from the trade unions you spoke to. Um, so if there's no attempt to get rid of zero-hour contracts, we are going to... Uh, to get rid of them completely, we are going to see abuses. Now, it was interesting listening to the discussion at the hearing that the Sinn Féin bill got on zero-hour contracts, and much of it was certain employers kicking up a stink, saying they don't exist. Stop it, they don't exist, we don't do that. And if you try to legislate against them, you'll only ruin our industry. You'll ruin the hospitality industry, you'll ruin the private healthcare sector, you'll ruin the retail sector. And the sky is not going to fall in if we control these sectors. But I want to say to you, Minister, that we're not going to be able to with this limited legislation. Because I had a letter today, an email today, the strike in Tesco. And I know that you said, and you probably believe it, that the vast majority of employers in this country are decent. Tesco is the biggest private sector employer in this country, the vast majority of employers, sorry, is the biggest private sector employer in this country, employing nearly 50, 15,000 workers. And at this time last year, they went on strike to protect the terms and conditions of over 1,000 of them who had pre-96 contract. Since then, this woman tells me today, Breed was a horrendous year after we went back to work at the end of February, on the, February the 24th. The bullying, the harassment, the discrimination and the downright rude and unprofessional professional behaviour by management towards workers was too much to bear at times. Our union lodged a claim for a 2% increase which was granted by the Labour Court was refused to the pre-96 workers. That was in 2016. In 2017 they lodged a claim for a 3% increase. It was granted to everybody but the pre-96 workers. This worker claims that they are owed uh, 6% in pay and when they approached their employer about it through their union there was a categorical no you are not getting it and there's been consistent bullying the consequence of which is that we have seen the numbers of pre-96 workers drop from 1050 now to 180. So there was just systematic abuse, bullying and ty tyrannical behaviour in order for the employer to get their way. Now, how do you as a minister propose to control that if it's not through creating very robust and decent legislation? Uh, I believe that that is the sort of behaviour that employers will uh, increasingly engage in. We see it in the construction industry at the moment. There are a plethora of uh, contractors and agencies who are bringing construction workers onto sites which are contracted by the state. Big companies like BAM are using these, uh, these uh, mushrooming and growing uh, agencies such as Manpower and CLS and 3D who hire and fire at will. They don't even take PRSI uh, deductions from the employee, which makes it more difficult for them to have protection in the future and which is a loss to the state. And this is happening whole scale. So there are many, many more abuses that this bill isn't uh, going to deal with. Now, I know you're not sorting out all of the exploitation that happens to working class people in one fell swoop, but this bill is by a long shot uh, not, not robust enough. Um, I finally would like to ask you, Minister, a kind of a, how do you intend to implement all of the measures of the bill if you do get it passed? Because there aren't enough labour inspectors in this country already to deal with the amount of complaints and problems that we have in the building industry alone, never mind all the other, other industries where this level of exploitation uh, happens. How do you propose that you can uh, you know, engage more inspectors through the WRC? Will the WRC go down to workplaces and say, you're breaking the law, I want you in here, and I'm going to issue the fines and the sentences that the bill uh, that Regina Doherty brought in are, 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 are applicable to you? We need to know these things in order to support the bill, but we will also, uh, Minister, without doubt, be seeking to amend it in, in, in a very major way. And I do would urge your department to go back and look at the bills 
uh, that solidarity people before profit have before you on bogus self-employment and the bill that Sinn Féin have before you on banded air contracts. They are much more robust and much more useful to the tens of thousands of exploited workers who are living and trying to exist in these terrible conditions.